Hello! Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so happy that you're here watching this video because today I'm going to be sharing with you my number one favorite children's book. This book is Zen Shorts by John J. Muff. I love this book so much. You can learn so many lessons from this book. There are so many morals. Zen Shorts by John J. Muth. So throughout this book, we are gonna be doing some yin yoga poses. That means that we're gonna go into the poses and we're gonna hold those poses for a little while and really feel that stretch. So I want you to find somewhere where you're gonna be comfortable. If you have a mat, grab a mat. You can just use a blanket or even just use the floor, whatever works for you. So we're gonna to begin today in butterfly pose. In butterfly pose, we put the bottoms of our feet together. You can hold it just like this and be completely still. You could flap those butterfly wings. Choose what feels best to you. So I'm going to keep my butterfly completely still as I share this story with you. And as I share this with you, you may not be able to see the pictures, the illustrations perfectly, but that's okay because whatever you can picture up in your imagination will be even more beautiful than any illustrator could ever create. Michael, there's a bear outside, said Carl. A what? called Michael. A bear. He's really big and he's in the backyard. What's he doing? Michael asked. He's sitting. He has an umbrella, said Carl. An umbrella? By the time the boys got outside, their sister, Addie, was already talking with him. I'm sorry for arriving unannounced, said the bear. The wind carried my umbrella all the way from my backyard to your backyard. I thought I would retrieve it before it became a nuisance. He spoke with a slight panda accent. Michael introduced himself. Then Addie introduced Carl because Carl was shy around bears he didn't know. And this is how Addie, Michael, and Carl met Stillwater. The next day, Addie went to have tea with Stillwater. Hello, Addie said as she stepped inside. Come in, come in, a faraway voice called. Then she heard the voice say, oh, yes, come out, come out. Stillwater was in the backyard. He was in a tent. This is a birthday present from my Uncle Rye, Stillwater said. He always gives presents on his birthday to celebrate the day he was born. I like it so much that I'm not staying in my house right now. Stillwater invited Addie to sit with him. You brought me some cake, said Stillwater. That was very nice of you. Is it your birthday? he asked. No, said Addie. It's not mine either, said Stillwater. But let me give you a gift. For my uncle's birthday, I will tell you a story. So we are to our first Zen short, our first little story within a story. So we're gonna go into our next Yin pose. I want you to come into Caterpillar. So Caterpillar, you're gonna start with your legs out in front of you, straight in front of you. We're gonna pretend we have hinges in our hips and we're gonna hinge at our hips and reach forward for Caterpillar. If you can reach your toes, that's wonderful. If not, that's okay. Go as far as is comfortable for you as I read Uncle Rye and the Moon. While you're in Caterpillar, you can close your eyes and envision the story. 
Use your imagination. Uncle Rye and the Moon. My Uncle Rye lived alone in a small house up in the hills. He didn't own many things. He lived a simple life. One evening, he discovered he had a visitor. A robber had broken into the house and was rummaging through my uncle's few belongings. The robber didn't notice Uncle Rye, and when my uncle said, hello, the robber was so startled he almost fell down. My uncle smiled at the robber and shook his hand. Welcome, welcome, how nice of you to visit. The robber opened his mouth to speak, but he couldn't think of anything to say. Because Rye never lets anyone leave empty-handed, he looked around the tiny hut for a gift for the robber. But there was nothing to give. The robber began to back toward the door. He wanted to leave. At last, Uncle Rye knew what to do. He took off his only robe, which was old and tattered. Here, he said, please take this. The robber thought my uncle was crazy. He took the robe, dashed out the door, and escaped into the night. My uncle sat and looked at the moon, its silvery light spilling over the mountains, making all things quietly beautiful. Poor man, lamented my uncle. All I had to give him was my tattered robe. If only I could have given him this wonderful moon. I want you to come out of your caterpillar now. So you're leaning over in caterpillar, coming back up to butterfly. Your uncle sounds nice, said Addie. I don't think I could have given away my only robe. I know how that is, said Stillwater, but there's always the moon. That was a good story, said Addie. Thank you, said Stillwater. And this is good cake. Thanks, said Addie. I made it myself. The next day, Michael went to see Stillwater. Here I am, Stillwater called from the tree. Can I come up? asked Michael. If you are careful, said Stillwater. What if we could fly, said Michael. We could cast shadows on clouds, said Stillwater. But what if we fell, said Michael. If we fell, we might break something, said Stillwater. That would be bad, said Michael. Maybe, said Stillwater. Maybe, asked Michael. We are coming into our next mini story, so we're going to go into a new pose. As I read the farmer's luck to you, I want you to come into Sphinx pose. So you're going to come to your belly, forearms on the floor in front of you, just like this. <laughs> There's a dog looking at me. <laughs> Hi. All right, so this is Sphinx pose, and I want you to hold it just like this while I read the farmer's luck. Feel free to close your eyes and visualize the story. There was once an old farmer who had worked his crops for many years. One day, his horse ran away. Upon hearing the news, his neighbors came to visit. Such bad luck, they said sympathetically. Maybe, the farmer replied. The next morning, the horse returned, bringing with it two other wild horses. Such good luck, the neighbors exclaimed. Maybe, replied the farmer. The following day, his son tried to ride one of the untamed horses, was thrown off and broke his leg. Again, the neighbors came to offer their sympathy on his misfortune. Such bad luck, they said. Maybe, answered the farmer. The day after that, military officials came to the village to draft young men into the army to fight in a war. 
Seeing that the son's leg was broken, they passed him by. Such good luck, cried the neighbors. Maybe, said the farmer. Come on out of Sphinx pose now and we're coming back into our butterfly. I get it, said Michael. Maybe good luck and bad luck are all mixed up. You never know what will happen next. Yes, Stillwater agreed. You never know. The day after that, Carl went to visit Stillwater. Michael said I couldn't bring over our stuff to go swimming. I'm mad at Michael. He's always telling me what to do. So I brought everything. Hmm, said Stillwater. It's a little pool. I don't know if all those things will fit. Let's see, Carl said. Let's see, said Stillwater. Stillwater looked at the pool. The things can go swimming, but we can't, he said. I brought too much stuff, said Carl. That's okay, said Stillwater. I'll help you carry it home later. Why does Michael always have to tell me what to do? Carl said. If he were here, I would climb up really high and I would jump on him like this and I'd do a big smash like this. Later, Carl and Stillwater had tea. Carl, said Stillwater, you spent the whole day being angry with Michael. Did you notice how much fun we had? Carl watched the steam rise from his cup. I'm sorry, I brought all this stuff, Carl said. You don't need to be sorry, said Stillwater. Right now, you need to carry. Hold on tight, and I will tell you a story. Now for this final short in the book, my favorite, called A Heavy Load, we're gonna go into garland pose. So this one's really fun. So you're gonna come up to a little squat, like this, and you can put your hands together in front of you. You can put them down on the floor, wherever they feel good. <laughs> so find what feels comfortable for you. And I want you to hold this pose while I read a heavy load. Two traveling monks reached a town where there was a young woman waiting to step out of her sedan chair. The rains had made deep puddles and she couldn't step across without spoiling her silken robes. She stood there looking very cross and impatient. She was scolding her attendants. They had nowhere to place the packages they held for her, so they couldn't help her across the puddle. The younger monk noticed the woman, said nothing, and walked by. The older monk quickly picked her up, put her on his back, transported her across the water and put her down on the other side. She didn't thank the older monk. She just shoved him out of the way and departed. As they continued on their way, the young monk was brooding and preoccupied. After several hours, unable to hold his silence, he spoke out. That woman back there was very selfish and rude but you picked her up on your back and carried her. Then she didn't even thank you. I set the woman down hours ago, the older monk replied. Why are you still carrying her? Come on back down to Butterfly as we finish our book. Do you think you have carried it long enough asked Stillwater. Yes, said Carl. Good, said Stillwater. And this is how Addie, Michael, Carl, and Stillwater became friends. The end. Thank you so much for joining me as I read Zen Shorts. And thank you for joining me in some yin yoga. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear which one of the stories in this book was your favorite. Feel free to leave a comment and let me know. 
Thank you so much and I hope you have a wonderful day.